Hello, my name is Brian Osborne, and this is today's Photo Minute. And uh, we're coming to you from the photo classroom. And uh, it's kind of an exciting day, and I wanted to talk about composition, just one element of composition today, because tonight we have our very first Composition One virtual class, and uh, many students are going to be joining us for that to learn what makes a more effective image and how to do that with some aesthetic principles or, or uh, guidelines to that. Uh, there are a few spaces left, so if you get the chance and you want to join us, it'd be great. Uh, but uh, if I think about composition and I think about what is the number one thing that all of us struggle with as photographers in terms of making the most dynamic images that we can, I would come back to what we set up as a, a couple questions for composition. And the first question is what? Uh, when I say what, what I'm re really referring to is that before you take, a, before you capture any image, what is your main subject? What is the main thing that you want to communicate to the viewer that's going to see your image itself? And the problem is, is that for all of us as photographers, we sometimes like to include lots of different things in one picture, uh, somehow thinking that that makes it a more dynamic or more powerful image. And yet the reality is, is that if we include multiple subject matters, multiple interesting things in one picture, um, often the viewer may not know exactly what our main point was. And of course, they may not know what our main point was because in essence, we didn't really know what our main point was when we took the picture. And so um, uh, our encouragement, my encouragement to myself and to all of us is that we really um, make sure that before we snap images that we wanna create that are really um, interesting and dynamic, that we call out on our heads, my main subject is blank. My what is blank. And if you start filling in that blank space with more than one subject matter, then it may be time for us to actually start to cut other things out of the picture, other subject matters, so that the focus of the image, the attention of the image, is very clearly on one subject matter. And so when I think about what, I think about what are you gonna include in the frame, and also the inverse of that, which is what are you not gonna include in the frame. Sometimes what we cut out is actually the most important part of creating great pictures. And then the other part of that is that do you even need the whole subject in the frame itself? So in other words, if you're taking a picture of a uh, person, a portrait, do you need a full length picture of the person? Or would the, it, uh, would the image actually be more interesting if you just had a headshot of the person, just the, the head and show the facial features and the expression? Um, and so it's just one quick example of uh, the what is not just cutting out additional subject matters, but sometimes the what drives us to actually get in tight on just one subject matter and, and maybe not even show the entire subject matter. The reality is if I show you part of a subject matter, your mind is easily gonna identify that there's more of that subject matter than uh, what I might be showing you in the picture. And that is even a more effective way to get um, interesting images. Um, now, how do you get tight? Well, number one is you can move closer. Um, you can also uh, use your zoom on a zoom lens and zoom in tighter. And then if you've tried both of those and you still don't have a tight enough image, uh, you haven't cut out enough stuff when you get to your final picture, then obviously we can use the cropping tool on our computer to crop out additional things. And it's amazing that the more you just keep cutting stuff out, the more effective the actual image is itself. So my practice exercise for us today is to pick up our cameras and to make sure that before we snap some pictures, maybe we can go outside, it's a beautiful day, uh, let's make sure there's one dominant subject matter in our frame itself. Maybe we go in and take that picture and we make sure that we're cutting out any additional things that may not be adding to the main subject matter that we've decided to capture in that single frame. And then push yourself a little bit beyond that and maybe you don't include the entire subject matter in there. Maybe you find a subject matter and then you just photograph just a piece of it or crop the picture down later and to just a piece of the original frame that you took. Um, and so this is something we can practice on our cameras ideally, but this is also something where you could just pull up a couple pictures on your computer and just say to yourself, you know what, I, I think I got the whole subject in there, but maybe I wanna try just getting a piece of the subject in that picture and see if it doesn't actually make for a more effective image. Uh, I hope this is helpful to you. Um, it's just the number one thing I see a struggle with as photographers when it comes to composition is that we like to include way too many things in the picture. And I think that what question, what are you taking a picture of and how much of it do you even need to include in the frame that you're taking is really critical to helping us kind of up the level 
of the uh, images that we're creating. Uh, once again, thank you for joining me to, for today's Photo Minute. Uh, please continue to follow us online at the website or on Facebook. Uh, on Facebook, you could even share some of your example pictures if you get a chance to practice this afternoon. And we'll be back tomorrow with, one, with another session of uh, this learning exercise that we continue to do. Thank you again. Have a great day.